In this tutorial you will learn how to install and configure FileZilla server for Windows. Download FileZilla server from FileZilla website. Confirm you want to allow it to make changes to your device. You need to accept the terms. Select what to install. Normally you want both the server and the administration interface to configure it. By selecting the start menu shortcuts or desktop icons, the installer will add links to the administration interface and to start or stop the server. Browse and choose where to install it or just click next and get it installed in the default location. Choose a start menu folder or enter one. FileZilla server is installed as a Windows service and you can start it manually or automatically. The checkbox to start the server after the setup completes is selected by default, deselect it if you want. You have to set the port on which FileZilla server will listen to connections from the administration interface. The FileZilla server port used to serve client connections is set later. Choose your administrator password and enter it. Retype it to confirm it. If you don't set a password, for security reasons you can configure only servers responding on localhost. The administration interface can be set to start automatically for every user, for the current user or manually. The installation is complete, you can now start configuring FileZilla server. The connection dialog requires you to enter the host, that might be either an IP address or a host name, a port number and your password. If you installed FileZilla server locally, the host will be listening on the localhost IP, 127.0.0.1. The administration server will be listening on port 14148, unless during the installation you change the default value. If you set a password enter it. If you want to avoid retyping it select the checkbox. If you want the administration interface to connect automatically to that FileZilla server instance select the checkbox. To create a user click on the add button. Choose a name for the user and select the type of authentication. You can allow the user to access the server with or without a password, or using system credentials. For example, you can set slash as virtual path, associate a native path to it and set the permissions you like. In this video you learned how to install FileZilla server and how to create your first user. In this tutorial you will learn more about FileZilla server's user types and how to use placeholders to define native paths. When you create a user, you can use the special user called system user. The system user can impersonate any user already available on the operating system. In this case you can only use system credentials to log in. System credentials consist of a username and a password of a local user. You can also select the Use System Credentials also for accessing files and directories checkbox, to grant the user the same access privileges that are associated with their host operating system account. To enable anonymous access to your server, create a user and select Do not require a password to log in. If you don't want to use the operating system's user accounts but you want users to authenticate, select the option Require a password to log in. Then write the password in the next field and communicate that to the user through a secure channel. Placeholders are variables that can be used to define native paths. There are two types available. Colon H gets replaced with the absolute path corresponding to the home directory of the system user logged in. Colon U gets replaced with the name of the user logged in. It might be useful to define groups. In the example, the users belonging to the group would have slash pointing to their respective FTP home directories. In this video you learn more about FileZilla server users and how to configure them. In this tutorial you will learn how to generate a TLS certificate via Let's Encrypt in the administration interface log in using your credentials. Go to the server menu and select Configure. On the left click on Let's Encrypt. Check the checkbox to enable Let's Encrypt certificate generation. If you don't already have a Let's Encrypt account, you need to create it. Click on the Generate New Account button. You need to input at least one contact URL and specify which ACME protocol directory. The URL in this case must be an email address, which must begin with mail to colon. The ACME directory might be either Let's Encrypt Production, Let's Encrypt Staging or a custom one. Let's Encrypt recommends testing against their staging environment before using their production environment. Select Custom if you want to use a provider that is compatible with Let's Encrypt. Accepting Let's Encrypt terms is mandatory. Click on the link to learn more. Let's Encrypt generates your certificate. 
To prove that the domain name for which you are requesting the certificate is under your control you need to select a challenge method. You can either use an internal, minimal web server created on the fly by FileZilla server, or use an already running web server whose file system FileZilla server has access to. Go to Protocol Settings, FTP and FTPS, and in the Connection Security tab from the TLS Certificate top-down menu, select Use Let's Encrypt Certificate. Click on the Generate New button and enter one or more host names. Then click the OK button. The internal web server must be reachable from the internet. Make sure that the IP addresses associated to your host names are properly routed to the FileZilla server. If everything works you'll get the certificate. Click the OK button to start using the new certificate. The log will show that a new certificate has been generated. In this tutorial you will learn how to manage FileZilla server network configuration. Go to the server menu and select Network Configuration Wizard. The welcome screen provides basic information about active and passive mode. The wizard will help you to configure your router and firewall to support passive mode. Set the range of ports that will be used for passive mode data connections. You can either set a custom port range or let the operating system decide. In any case you need to configure the appropriate port forwarding rules on the NAT device. Enter the host name or the IP address where the FileZilla server will be made available. For local connections leave the checkbox check to confirm the choice to use the local IP instead. Remember that to allow users to connect from the internet you need to make sure firewalls and routers are properly set. The last dialog recaps all configurations. Please double check them all. Make sure both your router and firewall are configured so that the connections can pass through. If everything looks good click on the finish button. The log will show that a new configuration has been successfully stored. If you want you can use our online FTP tester to see if everything works. Manual configuration. Actually, you can also configure FileZilla server without using the wizard. Click on the passive mode tab. The window dialog contains all configurations. To use a custom range of ports, select the use custom port range checkbox. Now enter the lower bound in the first field and the upper bound in the second one. Consider setting the range greater than the number of transfers that will take place in a 4 minutes interval. For example, the current range would be able to accommodate at least 5000 transfers in that period of time. If you want the FileZilla server to be reachable via the internet, in the next field you need to enter its public IP address or its host name. By default, FileZilla server uses the default host for local connections. You might deselect that option to test locally your network configuration though. Now let's see how to connect to FileZilla server in active mode. For this part of the video, we'll use FileZilla Pro client. Make sure FileZilla server is allowed to establish outgoing connections to arbitrary ports, since it is the client deciding which port to use. Check your firewall configurations and update them if needed. Now launch FileZilla Pro to test your connection. In the settings go to FTP and select active mode. You might want to limit the number of ports to be used, by default are not limited. By default, FileZilla Pro asks the operating system for the machine's IP address. That works only if you are connected to the internet directly, without any NAT router and if the firewall allows connections on all ports greater than 1024. If you are connected to the internet via a NAT router, if you have a static IP address, select use the following IP address and enter it. If you don't have a static IP, select get external IP from the following URL and enter your dynamic IP provider or use the one provided by FileZilla Pro. Double check you open the ports in your firewall and that you set appropriate routing rules on your NAT router to forward these ports to your machine. Now you should be able to connect to the FileZilla server. In this video, we will show you how to export and import FileZilla server configurations. Access the administration interface of the server and from the server menu. Select export configuration. By default, all items are selected. You can review and modify these selections according to your needs. To import a server configuration from the administration interface, go to the server menu and select import configuration. The file dialog allows you to choose the configuration file you want to import. Once you select a configuration file, you will see a list of the available items to import. You can only select items that exist in the actual configuration file. Press the OK button to initiate the import process. The imported settings have effect immediately. The administration interface will report the results of the import in the log which you can review in the most recent log entry. In this tutorial you will learn how to configure the web user interface for FileZilla Server and FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server. From the server menu, select Configure to launch the administration interface. By default, 
the web user interface is not activated. To activate it, click the Add button. In the Address field, enter 0.0.0.0 for IPv4, or double colon for IPv6, which allows connections from any network interface. Then, specify the port, typically 443, so that end users don't need to enter a port number manually. In the Protocol field, select Web UI from the drop-down menu, and click the Apply button. By default, the server automatically generates a self-signed certificate, but you can provide your own, or use a Let's Encrypt certificate, to save users from manually approving it in the browser. If you use a self-signed certificate, remember to share the certificate's fingerprint with end users for secure access. Next, navigate to the Token Management tab. Here, you can set the lifespan of access and refresh tokens. If you're unfamiliar with the differences between these types of tokens, please refer to the link in the description for more information. Setting the refresh token to zero will restrict user authentication to the duration of the access token. To allow users to extend their session without needing to re-authenticate, set the refresh token to a value greater than zero. If needed, you can revoke all existing tokens by clicking the Revoke All Existing Tokens button. You can enable or disable web UI access for individual users, or groups, by selecting the appropriate setting from the drop-down menu in the Protocols tab. Enabled, disabled, or determined by group or system policies. Now, you can grant users access to your server through the web user interface. Watch the next tutorial to see how users can use the web user interface. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to navigate FileZilla Server and FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server using the web user interface. If you haven't configured your server to enable the web user interface yet, please watch the tutorial linked in the description. Open a browser and enter your server's address. If you've selected a port other than 443, include a colon after the address, followed by the port number. When accessing the server via the web interface for the first time, the browser may alert you that the self-signed certificate has not been issued by a trusted certification authority. To verify the self-signed certificate, click the browser's favicon, select, your connection to this site isn't secure, and then click the certificate icon in the top right corner to view certificate details. If the certificate fingerprint matches what the server administrator provided, proceed by selecting, advanced, and clicking the continue to server name or address unsafe link at the bottom. Log in with the user's credentials. You can intuitively navigate the server's file system, moving seamlessly between directories by using the path menu in the top left corner. Right-click on a file to open the context menu. From here, you can download, share, rename, or delete the file. To share a file, select the Share option. You can set an expiration date by enabling the option and choosing a specific date. Additionally, you have the option to set a password. Once done, click Create the link. You can now share the generated link. If you set a password, the recipient will be prompted to enter it when accessing the file. To upload a file, click the Upload button, then the plus symbol, and select the file you wish to upload. You can also create new folders by clicking the New Folder button. FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server is a fast, secure and reliable file transfer server for Windows. It supports FTP, FTPS and SFTP, web interface, user impersonation, second factor authentication and much more. Do you need to store and share files safely? Time to get your copy of FileZilla Pro Enterprise Server. Go to FileZillaPro.com and buy it with confidence. See you in the next video.